Welcome, this is item number five from the newly released spring 2014 test items uh, for seventh grade TCAP math. The question says Paula paid for four sets of chairs with $120. She received $7 in change. Which equation can be used to find C, the total cost of dollars, including sales tax? Because, you know, who wouldn't want to include sales tax in this situation? But anyway, let's talk about the question. We essentially have two ideas going on. We have one that deals with what Paula has, which I'm going to represent with this. This is her hand, I'm assuming. Could be anybody's hand, who knows? Somebody else holds her money, I don't know. Uh, and then the store. By the way, I took this photo of the store because it's a store, which I thought was epic. Anyway, uh, let's just look at visually what's there. Paula paid for a set of four chairs with $120. She gave $120 to the store. So we're gonna put, in green of course, why wouldn't we, $120 over here. She gave $100, $120 to them. What she is left with is four chairs. I don't know what color chairs are. Brown probably, but I'm going to use purple because it's already what I had. And then she also gets seven dollars and change. She gets seven bucks and four chairs. So those must be pretty decent chairs, I would imagine. I don't know. Um, so if we have this information, it's really easy to create the equation. You'll notice that I don't have to do anything after 7 because it's by itself. The $120 just sits. That's the total amount that was the transaction involved. It was the, the base amount. So it's $120 equals. Now, the $120 just sits there. It doesn't matter. I'm not trying to break it down and figure out, well, let me, tell me something about the parts of 120 chairs or $120. I just want to know something about $120 and that's how much it is. There it is. Done. Uh, same thing for the $7 and change. There you go. It's just $7. On the other side of it, there's four chairs. And we want to know the cost of each chair. Anytime you see the word each, it generally refers to some sort of, uh, we're going to have multiply showing, and then we divide to figure it out. So we want to break a number into parts. We have to have the number of parts times the item name. So in this case, I have four chairs, so I'll say four chairs. So if you just write out all the parts, I mean, you probably won't have access to s totally sweet clip art while you're doing it, but if you make like a little drawing for yourself of what Paula has versus what the store has, it's really easy to write this equation. So you get this set up. And just sort of think in your head, if you don't want to go that far with it, like, okay, what's Paula left with versus what's the store? The store gets $120. They give seven of it back. But, it, you know, you could do this if you want. She gets out four chairs, so she pays $120. They give back seven. So she ends up, so if I want to get it all together on one side, I have to add seven over here and end up with four chairs plus $7 equals 120 the minus seven ish part people are going to think okay well it's b because she gets the seven is you know not part of what she got but it's subtracted from the store the focus of the story with the chairs is what paula ends up with she ends up with four chairs seven bucks and the store ends up with 120. if you break it down into that form it gives you a better overall feel this is the perfect time to like doodle for a few minutes um or, you know not for very long other students will whatever, whatever. But spend a little time drawing some stuff. It makes it easier to visualize when you're doing it, and that way you're not just picking an answer. You can beat this question. It's not a difficult question once you get to draw a picture, and you probably draw in the corner of your notebook anyway, so this is a chance to do it for a real reason. And then when your teacher asks you what you're doing, you're like, I'm learning. You know, win-win for everyone. That's it.